Battlefield 5 has numerous different classes of weaponry available to an infantry player, and it's not necessarily always clear for what and when these weapons really shine. Now, as we get more and more information about how weapons behave, and not just in terms of personal experience, but more importantly in terms of good old hard numbers and facts, early releases from stats from Simthic is what I'm specifically referring to in this case, we can start to really picture together the weapon balance that DICE has envisioned for this game. By no means is it perfect. In my last video, I talked about how the SMGs are in a dire need of a buff, but overall, I think it would be helpful to talk a little bit about the assault rifles, the semi-automatic rifles, the SMGs, the MMGs, the LMGs, of course, the SLRs and sniper rifles as well, and talk a little bit about how they differentiate themselves from previous iterations in the Battlefield series, and more importantly, what kind of playstyle is associated with making them successful in Battlefield 5. That being said, and jumping straight into it, we're going to start off with familiar territory, assault rifles, what I admittedly have spent a large amount of time up until now in Battlefield 5 playing. I very much enjoyed my STG, my Sturmgewehr 1.5, and even the M1907SF. Now these weapons, as previously mentioned, are a 5 or 6 shot kill. 6 shots at any range in the body will guarantee you a kill on a full health target in this game. The problem with these weapons is, of course, they're generally quite difficult to control. You've got a higher degree of recoil, especially horizontal recoil, but also vertical recoil, making them, while range effective, and more range effective than a lot of classes of weaponry out there, not easy to necessarily master. And as such, unsurprisingly, they're more of the close quarter medium range weapon, less of the long range, although you can extend something like the STG with the occasional bit of tap firing or single shot firing. The semi-automatic rifles, on the other hand, the other class of weaponry available to the assault in Battlefield 5, is a 4 or 5 shot kill all the way down to a 3 shot kill and that consistently. It really depends which weapon you take. The M1A1 carbine very much becomes a pea shooter at long range at 5 bullets, whereas the Gewehr 43 or even the Zebslader are consistent all range 3 shot kills, much closer to what we had in Battlefield 1 in terms of the SLRs there, whereas we're of course talking here about the semi-automatics. Now generally these weapons, as long as you are an accurate player, are easier to control and they're far more range flexible, with the exception of close quarter situations where low fire rate single shot weapons just generally are not going to really be able to keep up with automatic weapons, even automatic weapons with the same kind of time to kill, these weapons will generally perform well. For a matter of fact, the assault class weaponry as whole, that is the ARs, assault rifles and the semi-autos, generally favor or enable more of a reactionary playstyle. It's less about positioning because they are quite range flexible. Unless you get caught out at proper long range, you've always got a weapon that you're capable of doing some damage with. They've got quick ADS times, which just undermines this kind of playstyle of, oh, I've been surprised by an enemy, I quickly have to aim down sight. And they've also got good moving accuracy, allowing them again to be a little bit more flexible in terms of how they play their weapons when fighting, for example, against scout at long range, trying to avoid getting sniped. All in all, what this class of weaponry generally does is focus on learning and playing the weapon more than it does focus on how to actually position yourself and put yourself in an advantageous situation. That's not to say that that's not important and putting yourself in good positioning is always going to give you an advantage over other enemies. But in the case of the assault class weaponry, the focus really is on weapon control and accuracy Accuracy, of course, more in the case of the semi-autos, and weapon control, more in the case of the assault rifles, and less on finding that perfect piece of cover. The medic class, of course, comes with the SMGs. Now, we've talked about these at length in the last video that I posted, so I'm just going to go over these briefly in today's video. Feel free to check out that video if you want more details on how SMGs work and why they're a little bit unbalanced as they stand right now. Generally, they're a 4-8 to eight shot kill. Should be noted that 4 shot kill is only out until 9 meters, so it's not generally too effective. And generally, they've got good hip fire, and at least the higher RPM SMGs, something like the Thompson or the Sumi, or even the MP28, depending on, are good close quarter weapons. None of these weapons are good at medium long range, and for a matter of fact, I'd argue that the low fire rate weapons aren't even really good at close quarters compared to some of the better assault rifles and some of the other available SMGs. So. You're generally playing medic not for the weapons, you're playing medic for the class in itself. It brings some advantages in forms of health and insta-health at all time. Personal opinion, it's not enough to really make up for the shortcomings of the weaponry. Of course, in terms of combat distances, you're going to want to use these at close quarters. In terms of medium range engagements, you can. You just have to be able to deal with the fact that you've got a significantly longer time to kill on your target. There you're going to want to aim down sight. There you're going to make sure you have good positioning. But otherwise, they play in close quarters, similar to how an assault rifle would, just with the added benefit of some excellent hip fire and with the choice of the right weapon, a time to kill advantage as well. The LMGs from the support class are 
probably the most powerful class of weaponry in terms of raw stats. We mentioned previously that the assault rifles were good, but they focused more on a reactionary playstyle. Well, the LMGs don't. They focus more on a proactive playstyle, position yourself correctly, but reward you then with some very, very competent weapons. Now, not all of the LMGs are great, but things like the FG-42 or even the starter weapon, the KE-7, are extremely strong weapons. Now, to start off with, the LMGs, like the SMGs, come with a four-shot kill in close quarters up until 9 meters, which is kind of amusing given that there are LMGs which can comfortably outdamage or keep up with, in terms of fire rate, the assault rifles, but have a lower bullet to kill. At the same time, they have the same medium long range six shot kill that the assault rifles come with. So from 50 meters, both the assault rifles and the LMGs are doing the same or roughly the same amount of damage. They then need a six shot kill. Before that, they're generally also the same. The only exception is that up until nine meters, the LMGs have a lower bullet to kill than the assault rifles. The reason why the LMGs, and for a matter of fact, the MMGs as well, which we will talk about in just a minute, focus more on positioning is because they have poorer hip fire, especially compared to the SMGs, but also when compared to the assault rifles. And of course, they have access to bipods, which again compensates for their lower time to ADS. They've generally also got worse reloads. Overall, they're a little bit more of a slow and clunky feeling weapon. Which means, of course, you don't want to necessarily have to do a 360 and shoot somebody who suddenly surprised you from behind. You much would prefer to have that enemy 30, 40 meters in front of you and then, within your own time, positioning behind a good piece of cover, take that person out. I'm not saying you have to be bipodded, not at all. The K7, for a matter of fact, all of the weapons we've mentioned up until now, with the exception of the SMGs possibly, are extremely accurate weapons. You place that shot on that head, you're gonna get your headshot. And that headshot will do, I think, about 1.9 times more damage than an average shot, which a four, five, or six shot kill weapon is a whole lot of damage, especially if your target isn't at full health, which can happen quite a lot. So the LMGs are an extremely effective group of weapon, which have the added advantage of also having lower recoil in general, with a few exceptions, such as the FG-42 again, than the assault rifles. So they're easier to control, they really are capable of engaging targets at almost every range, especially when bipodded, but they come at the cost of not being quite as reactionary as the assault rifles, needing a little bit more thought put into where to position yourself, where to play your weapon from, instead of how to necessarily use your weapon. Recoil control and things like that, top firing, is less required with something like a KE-7 compared to something like a Sturmgewehr 1.5. The MMGs are a group of weapon that there won't be footage in today's video because I refuse to spend my time sitting on the floor bipodded and camping. If it is your kind of playstyle, go ahead because that's what the MMGs exceed at. They're the extreme version of the LMGs in the form that they're basically awful unless they're bipodded, but if they're bipodded, they're absolutely broken the OP. I mean, you're talking about fire rates here for something like the MG42 between 981 and 1200 rounds per minute with the same damage model as the K7, the LMGs in general. So four shot kill in close quarters, six shot kill at long range. So you should be able to really take on anybody at any range if you position yourself correctly. Again, that proactive positioning here is really what determines the entire existence of an MMG user. If you're not bipodded and you come up against somebody at a distance other than maybe five to 10 meters where you may be able to hip fire them down, you're gonna die. You need to be bipodded to use these weapons because you can't ADS when running around and standing without cover in front of you. Last year then, of course, these shotguns are available to the support class as well. And while there is only two, these two shotguns play very different. Now, shotguns are shotguns. They're for close quarters. They're generally geared towards a one-shot kill if they're low fire rate, which both of them are in the case of Battlefield 5. And therefore, there's not too much different about them compared to Battlefield 1 or even Battlefield 4. With the exception that one of these shotguns is pretty good and one of these shotguns is pretty bad. The drilling shotgun, which is, of course, a later unlock for the support class, is generally... Uh, able to one-shot kill somewhere technically around up until 20, 22 meters, something like that, according to the stats. Now, in terms of spread, that's probably not quite possible, but it's definitely going to be a little bit further than the 12G automatic, which is only capable of theoretically doing it up until 10 meters. I had a real hard time getting footage with the 12G simply because it's so range ineffective. It's really tough to use. It's really tough to get into close quarter combat close enough that you're actually able to one-shot kill your targets, even with, with good aim. And if you flank somebody and you miss one shot and they're surrounded by other enemies, they're just going to turn around and nuke you with their assault rifles and SMGs because they've just got a far easier time actually taking you down thanks to the good old ADAD spam, which we will be focusing on a little bit further down along in this video. Shotguns are generally somewhat impacted by the fact that we've got better time to kill and the shotguns didn't really get a boost. If you're going to go for the shotgun gameplay, definitely go for the M30 drilling and just don't bother with the 12G automatic, in my opinion. 
Last then, we do have the Scout. And the Scout was a powerful class in Battlefield 1 to say the least. And it still is in Battlefield 5, but it's got a little bit of a nerf. Because, well, firstly, no more sweet spot damage model. Secondly, lower muzzle velocities in general. You're looking at 500 to 700 meters per second instead of kind of 700 and upwards that we had in Battlefield 1 for the majority of the Scout weapons. And, of course, you've got more effective medium and long range fully automatic weapons in this game compared to previous iterations of the Battlefield series, specifically in this case, Battlefield. One. That's not to say that they're not effective. In the case of the bolt actions or the sniper rifles, you've got a lower minimum damage here. You've got no sweet spot. You've got that forementioned nerfed muzzle velocity, but you've got an increased focus on headshots. So while you, yes, can still two-shot body shot people, you generally won't get lucky and kind of do 80 damage and take somebody out anyway. No, you're going to have to go for those headshots, but they're still powerful. If you use the right scope, you've not got scope glint, and it's not like somebody can actually physically spot you for the whole team to see. So scouts are as deadly as ever and well and good alive. You're just going to need a little bit more focus on aim and good positioning than you could possibly in Battlefield 1, where with the help of the sweet spot mechanic and very, very good Good muzzle velocity kind of nailing headshots or even just long range body shots was a little bit easier. The more interesting of the classes of weaponry are the SLRs, separated from the semi automatics, unlike in Battlefield 1. And these weapons generally come in with a two or three shot kill at fire rates between somewhere around 180 to 200, sometimes slightly less rounds per minute. Now, technically, they're capable of out damaging weapons such as the STG. That is, however, only if you hit two shots in a row at maximum fire rate. As soon as you miss one shot, you're in trouble. They've got the same magazine constraints that the weapons had, the skill cannon weapons such as the outer loading and the RSE had in Battlefield 1, but they've got a much lower fire rate and they're coming up against harder damage drop off. So in the case of the outer loading, you end up with a 50 meter two shot kill and from that point onwards you're at a three shot kill, whereas in previous iterations, Battlefield 1, the outer loading was a 74, 70 meter, something like that, three shot kill that had maximum damage all the way until out there. So you have to play these weapons a little bit more aggressive than you did in Battlefield 1. The problem with that is you're coming up against very effective fully automatic weapons, which will ADAD spam all over the place while shooting at you because they've got an automatic weapon and they're still gonna get a kill. Where Whereas if you've got five shots and you need to place two accurately and if you miss one you've already kind of lost a firefight, you're in a little bit more trouble. These weapons are extremely difficult to use, there's no secret about them, but they are effective. These are weapons that can be used and they give the scout a more aggressive medium range option compared to, well, simply trying to quickscope people with a bolt action rifle as in previous games. That's your overview then for weapons in Battlefield 5. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of weapon balance so far in Battlefield and if you think it's better or worse than what we had in Battlefield 1 at launch. Leave that as well as of course your usual video suggestions down below in the comments or hit me up with them on Twitter. If you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. But with all that being said, I'd like to thank you very much for watching and hope to see you in the next Battlefield 5 video.